Mr. Wayne, something wrong? I am an animal! It's Penguin! I am cat. What are you? Batman, 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 Batman. We know who he is. Welcome to Gotham, a city that has been strangely quiet since the dark Avenger of the night, Batman, ended the Joker's reign of terror. However, lately, there have been new sightings that have been nagging the metropolis. As I was saying, there have been sightings of a beautiful woman with a mask, a whip, and a stunning black outfit, and a mysterious penguin creature with revenge on its mind. Just when we need him most, Batman returns. An exclusive first look at the making of this summer's epic adventure, Batman Returns, starring Michael Keaton as the Cape Crusader. I thought this was going to be kind of a breeze, but it turned out it wasn't like that at all. Danny DeVito as the evil penguin. <laughs> Who can hate a penguin? Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Yeah. And Michelle Pfeiffer as the sensuous but deadly Catwoman. Good at heart, but was always <laughs> running astray. We go behind the scenes with director Tim Burton, the man who took the comic book creation of Bob Kane and made him a movie star. Now, Burton creates a brand new Batman adventure with new sets and incredible new toys. It's the story of one legendary hero, two notorious villains, and three Hollywood stars. Good evening. I'm Robert Urich. Tonight, the adventure continues with the bat, the cat, and the penguin. In Batman Returns, the dark driving force is still Batman himself. It's kind of fun to play such an enormous heroic character. This is going to be kind of a breeze because Tim and I had talked about it. We figured we had this pretty well wired, you know, what I did, what I didn't do, what I needed to do, what I absolutely didn't need to do, what was better for me not to do. And we thought, well, this will be like, easy. This will be one of those where you just show up, you know, turn around, look in the camera, and we'll kind of spray a little sweat on your face like you just beat up five guys and go home. And it turned out it wasn't like that at all. In fact, in a lot of ways, this was harder because I found myself kind of doing an impersonation of myself, which was, first of all, impossible. Second of all, really strange. And so I just dropped that and said, no, 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 you gotta just open up like it's the first time and just trust that, you know, the character will be there, I guess. He's a very strange character because he's a character that likes to remain in the shadows, has a real split personality. He's fairly remote and conflicted. So in the first movie, I think we were really exploring that, and I felt like we arrived at it at the end, really. So I feel, and I think Michael will feel, feels the same way. You actually feel really good and comfortable. Or comfortable, so that we can take this uh, foundation and, and maybe explore it a little bit deeper. So I was interested in doing that. To destroy Batman, we must first turn him into what he hates the most, <laughs> namely us. Doctors have spent years trying to analyze these characters. So, I mean, you know, we'll do the best we can in two hours, but <laughs> there's, there's lots to explore with it. Who are you? Who's the man behind the bed? Maybe you can help me find the woman behind the cat. Saved by kitty litter. It's not a sequel. It's not a sequel in the sense it doesn't sort of pick up necessarily where one left off kind of a thing. And action! So the point is to make it feel uh, fresh and make it feel exciting and new and still be Batman. <laughs> you missed. Okay, go for the phone. Look funny. <laughs> On the phone. <laughs> I think that seems weirder. That does. <laughs> <laughs> Never 
never done this. You see what it, when you're not yeah. out doing this. And if you know, you're just being normal, you right, know what I mean? Right, just acting over, throw yeah. a glove up, kind of yeah. be winded. Yeah. And then, see, in one case, maybe it's good, like, that it's a little bit, it's like you're weird. being normal. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's what I think is kind of weirdly I mean, great about it. Alfred, bring me some antiseptic ointment, would you? Coming. In presenting a characterization as unusual as Batman's, even the smallest scenes demanded the detailed attention of Keaton and Burton, and the lighter moments were a welcome break in the complexity and pressure of a massive six-month shooting schedule. It's gonna be <laughs> Bush. The story of Batman Returns. It was really fun to watch the expression on Danny DeVito's and Michelle's face. I've never worked on a film this big before. In the movie, the Penguin tries a hostile takeover of Gotham City. I was pumped. The mysterious Catwoman... Actually more complicated than I could have even imagined. ...tries to sink her claws into Batman... And my claws were getting stuck and everything. Meanwhile, Bruce Wayne is attracted to a strangely familiar woman. I think this guy probably uh, goes big when he goes. And so does the Penguin. Likes her, lusts after her. But this cat isn't looking for dates. About every 15th day, rolls. that's usually where it rolls around with me, that I'm just kind of standing there waiting, and I kind of look at what everybody's wearing. I look at myself, and it gets really tremendously absurd. You know, when you kind of step outside yourself, and you realize... This is really nuts what we're doing. <laughs> you just gotta kinda laugh and say, well, here we go. When we come back from the rooftops of Gotham, the perfect enemy for Batman comes to life. You know, also, the whip is, is really lethal. I've drawn blood with it. <laughs> Accidentally, no. <laughs> For five decades, Batman has battled evil in Gotham. Now there are two fresh villains lurking in the shadows, waiting. One is seductively beautiful, lethally dangerous. Hmm. You never know where she'll appear out of the shadows. And like Michelle Pfeiffer, who portrays this lady of mystery, she is a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> People say to me, now, is she a bad guy or is she a good guy? Good at heart, but was always <laughs> running astray. Yeah. No pun intended. I thought it would be um, a couple of scenes and probably, you know, not a fully developed character. But I didn't care. I would have done it anyway because it's a kind of idol from my childhood. Then to my surprise, I read the script and I, I, I found her to be very interesting and, and very complicated, sort of psychologically. And actually, um, quite a challenge as an actress. I am Catwoman. Hear me roar. She starts out as actually a, as a fairly normal person. You kitty, 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 kitty. She suffers being in a man's world and, and all of the... Uh... Suppressed rage. The torture that goes along with being a woman. Catwoman comes in? What do you think I, it's on my mind? Down on the world. Parcheesi? <laughs> I wouldn't touch you to scratch you. She's basically somebody who's, who's driven to do something. Discovering just how lethal she can be and just about just sort of what she wants to destroy. <laughs> One of the things Catwoman wants to destroy is Shrek's department store, which is owned by an evil, scheming mega-millionaire who also just happens to be the boss of Secretary Selena Kyle, Catwoman's dual identity. And Catwoman's tool for this destruction? The bullwhip. Anthony, the longest. He was a great teacher. I'm Michelle Pfeiffer's whip trainer and choreographer. Most people, you know, have a tendency to raise their eyebrow when you say whip. The trick about it is it is traveling faster than the speed of sound. I'm breaking the sound barrier. So there is a certain hazard to it because it can cut skin, it can break bones. Also, the whip is, is really lethal. It, I mean, I've, I've, I've drawn blood with it. <laughs> Accidentally, no. Actually, Tim doesn't even know this. It was my first day of shooting and I 
I hadn't slept, and I was really nervous, and my whip trainer, we were both really nervous. And both of us weren't paying attention, and I nicked him here, and I drew... I was devastated, and... And he quickly went and like, covered it with me, because he knew if anybody saw it, they would all freak out. A lot of lessons. A lot of lessons. She is doing things with the whip that will make Indiana Jones green that 90% of the people who do this for a profession can't do. In this scene, Catwoman wants to whip off the heads of four mannequins, and Michelle's three months of training really paid off. She performed this difficult and potentially dangerous scene perfectly on the very first take. Action, Michelle! in terms of things that she had to do. A couple hours to put this makeup, could put this costume. Now come and use this whip, you know. Here, put this bird in your mouth. Nice birdie. Yeah. No, I don't think I've worn any rubber suits in any other movies. Um. It's just all really fun. <laughs> she's luscious, she's beautiful. She should be mine. One thing with the black rubber, it almost looks liquid on the body. I mean, she looks like she's wearing black glass. I mean, it's incredibly beautiful. And when you get someone who can really move like a cat, which Michelle can, it's just, it's very fluid looking. You don't, it doesn't look like what clothes. I don't know whether to open fire or fall in love. <laughs> she's a very feline creature, and she starts identifying with the cats and then literally makes herself a homemade cat suit. We wanted it to be tight to the body and sexy, and that's an obvious area to go into. I mean, especially with someone like Michelle Pfeiffer, who's, you know, got legs for days. <laughs> and, you know, you want to expose all those wonderful limbs and everything. The first time I put the outfit on, I thought, I can't walk. I can't breathe, I can't hear, I can't act <laughs> like this. And that's how I felt. Um, it took me a long time to get used to all of the elements. <laughs> She's so talented, there was never any question in my mind that not only was she gonna be really terrific in this, but she was gonna figure out how to do this. She's wasting her time with that bozo on the hill. When I saw her, the immediate uh, impression I got is that she's a great match with Michael Keaton. I mean, they're just, you know, there's four great eyes there, you know, between the two of them. And uh, that's very important to these characters, is what comes through. He sees himself in this woman. And there are points where, if you really want to examine it, they almost lose themselves in each other. You got kind of a, kind of a dark side, don't you? No darker than yours, Bruce. Um, it was a challenge. It was, it was actually one of, one of the most challenging roles I've done. The thought of busting Batman makes me feel all... Dirty. Next up, we meet the Penguin. He is, without a doubt, one of the most evil characters that I've ever encountered in my life. Danny DeVito, from the Bat, the Cat, and the Penguin, continues. It's bringing money and prices to choice hotels like Quality, Comfort, Clarion, and Sleep. Just enter the Choice Hotels Batman Return Sweepstakes. Pick up an entry form at any Choice Hotel, and you could win one of thousands of great Batman prizes, like a Plymouth Voyager, or a Choice Batman suitcase containing a quarter of a million dollars in cash. Is this a great hotel or what? Call 1-800-4-CHOICE to reserve your room at any quality, comfort, clarion, or sleep hotel. And then sleep, or Econolodge, Roadway, and Friendship. He doesn't get to stay free. But his kids do. Kid... Underneath Gotham streets lurks a twisted creature with a brilliant mind and an umbrella full of evil tricks. He also has an aquatic army of helpers that wreak havoc on unsuspecting Gotham. He's the Penguin, neither human nor foul, a character that's graphically brought to life by a man whose persona is larger than life, Danny DeVito. The name is Oswald! 
Cobblepot. I get around mostly by foot in my network of tunnels, but I have been known to ride in a duck. Uh, but uh, he is without a doubt one of the most evil characters that I've ever encountered in my life. Right now, my troops are fanning out across town. 50 years ago, Bob Kane introduced perhaps the most unusual Batman villain of all, a dapper little fellow named Oswald Cobblepot, also known as the Penguin. When I created the Penguin in the comic strip, I thought he was comical looking. When I was a kid, I read the comic books. He looked so unvillainous. You have a kind of an image of this Penguin character already. The Penguin looks like a cute little fellow. But just get that right out of your mind, because this is so totally unique and different, especially coming from this man. In the comics, I, th I thought that that was one of the weaker characters because that was actually one of the characters that had the least amount of, uh, of a foundation psychologically. It was more just a, a funny looking man as far as I could tell, but it's how we're making him the penguin. Unlike the comic book, Burton and DeVito have created a tragic, strangely deformed creature with a brilliant mind. He was abandoned by his parents, raised by penguins, and now lives in the sewer. Hi. Flanked by an army of loyal penguins, he embarks on a diabolical plan to destroy Gotham City and... Batman! I'm not a human being! I've never played anything like this before. I am an animal! This is from the bowels of I don't know where. Cold-blooded! I've never explored this in my life. I don't think there's anybody any better making the horrible acceptable. You're the coolest role model a young person could have. And you're the hottest young person a role model could have. I just feel like a real kindred spirit with Danny. I mean, somebody who just has a certain uh, take on things which I feel very close to. Director Tim Burton is also an artist, and his drawing of the Penguin became the blueprint for the look of the character. And to achieve the original look, DeVito endured a three-hour makeup routine. It's this cold, clammy glue. It would just go, you know, right, just like that, and then all in here, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the only moment that's like walking into the water, you know, really cold. You know, they, You take big leaps in your character, you know. So when I'd look at him, I was kind of envious sometimes because I knew you could kind of could really kind of get locked away and just, just go for it. It's really creepy. I was frightened. He handed me one of his slimy little slippers, you know. <laughs> and he looked at me. <laughs> that was it. I said, bye. Also, he stays in character all the time. I loved it. You know, I just loved it. It'll be another hour, you know. It's that penguin thing, you know? <laughs> For the penguins commando army, Burton needed a battalion of live trained penguins. What we've trained the birds to do is to come to a, a call, a whistle. We've trained them to wear their little missiles in their little hats. When they get to where they're going, they each get a fish. This is Lucy. She's been trained to wear these harnesses. She's been acclimated to this for about four weeks. Um, she's worn wardrobe in the past. They don't mind it. It's uh, part of the deal for them. The stages that we're working on are cooled to uh, 45, 50 degrees. The qualifications were, if you were a penguin and you were available, you had the job. Penguins? My babies? It was great working with the penguins. I had tons of penguins. Tons. Who, who can hate a penguin? The time has come to punish all of them! I rule the birds. Well, maybe not all the birds. To supplement the live penguins, Burton asked the makeup effects master, Stan Winston, who won Oscars for Aliens and Terminator 2, to create penguin robots. We are duplicating life so that we can get some performance out of a creature that otherwise would not be able to perform. If we do our job correctly, you should not be aware that these are not real penguins. Are you talking to me? Are you looking at me? The special effects technology that was utilized to create the illusion of real life 
also created the Penguin's trademark weapon of choice. They're very helpful. I can fly with my umbrellas. I can roast you like a marshmallow. <laughs> what is that supposed to hypnotize me? No. Just give you a splitting headache. All of these characters, Batman, Catwoman, Penguin, there's, there's a split with all of them. It was with the Joker also. And I think that's the most interesting thing about all of these characters. What they want to be versus what they are. And uh, what they look like versus what they think they look like. You just get all the emotions of, of humor, horror, uh, sadness, uh, drama, absurdity, and, and reality all at once. Tragic irony. Or poetic justice, you tell me. This stage right here, stage 16 on the Warner Brothers lot, is one of the biggest sound stages in the world. This, along with 12 other stages in Hollywood, was filled with spectacularly unique sets depicting the world of Gotham. Well, to create this new look, Tim Burton assembled a world-class team of creative artists and technicians, and the result is all sorts of wonderful new toys. So we have a new and improved uh, Batarang. We have a new Bat Ski Boat. And we have the Batmobile. It's a vision that we all remember. The Batmobile rocketing down the streets of Gotham to face the perils of yet another deadly encounter. Hey, and no speed limit. Tim created his own world for this movie. We didn't use anything from the real world. Everything takes place on the planet of Gotham City. And that's what movies should do. Gee, I forgot about all my problems for two hours. I just went to another place and I had a lot of fun. thrilled to the exploits of this mortal man who somehow accomplishes superhuman deeds as he fights for justice against the evil forces. We are right there with him. And our children see what we saw growing up, a hero. As long as we have our imagination and a little fantasy, we will have Batman. Good night from Gotham City. Yeah, I got to ride home.